Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to another video. It is Shamira, and I am sitting here working already. Um, I wanted to come on here and do a regular intro before I get into my zone. Um, it is 5.42 in the morning, so excuse my low energy, but I am starting my day by reviewing um, my emails and messages that I get from um, the practice manager or providers or my manager, coworkers. I like to read those emails before I jump into coding just in case um, I need to know anything before I start my day. So I have two emails. Well, actually it's the same email, but she emailed me twice. My practice manager, um, she, where is it? She's emailing me about 59426. And 59426 is our um, antepartum care code. It is this code right here. She is emailing me about um, one, the patient received a bill for this code. And um, I guess the patient was saying that this price was very, very high. I have no control over the prices of the um, charges that are billed, but I will explain to her that the 59426 was billed. Um, and then she sent me another one for the same reason, but this time the insurance is denying the 59426. And I'm pretty sure they're going to say they're denying it because it's included in delivery. But if you've watched my previous video, you guys know that when I build the deliveries, I'm usually only including the postpartum care, not the antepartum care. So I will have to explain that to her for her to explain to our denials department. Okay, so I just um, had to go into this one um, because my provider had to build ENMs and I looked at the insurance and the insurance was Blue Cross. And I saw that the patient was only, how many weeks is she? She was only six weeks and normally we would be billing um, that maternity, what is the actual code so I can show you guys. Cause I'm actually gonna have to explain it to my provider as, I mean to my practice manager as well. We should be billing the category two codes, which are just patient um, under the patient management category, which is these here. Um, the very first one is the 0500F, and that's usually the teaching nurse visit. And then the 0501F, you can see I have here for her preg exam. So this is the visit that I'm reviewing right now. And I was questioning because, you know, I forget why certain things are being billed the way they are. So I had to go in and read a couple comments. And I seen that this patient had a loss. So she lost um, her baby. But whenever the patient has a loss, we actually have to go back and then bill the insurance for those visits that she had um, prior to her loss. Because commercial insurances, we don't bill anything for the entire pregnancy until she delivers. So if the patient has a commercial insurance like Blue Cross or Aetna, Cigna, United Healthcare, I think it's like Choice, um, it's like choice something. Um, we don't bill the insurance at all until the patient delivers. So this patient had Blue Cross, so we didn't bill for her prenatal visits, but now that she had a loss, I have to go back or we have to go back and um, bill out E&Ms for those prenatal visits. So I'm going to accept this charge and put a comment that I reviewed it, um, patient, patient had loss and then I'm going to resubmit it and then it should reprocess and now this is going to go out to insurance because these 
0501F codes and the 0502F codes. These do not um, go out to insurance. My providers receive RVUs for those, but they're not billed to insurance. There's no fee for these codes. They're just $0 amounts. And um, these are the visits that we count in order to see like how many prenatal visits she has in case we have to break up that global package. So it's a lot with coding, but hopefully, hopefully you're just following me. tell because it's a lot brighter in here now but I saved a few notes here that I wanted to go over with you guys because I know you guys love my coding videos so right now um, I'm about to review a incomplete abortion with you guys and I'm going to show you how you would look this code up in your book um, the code that you're billing for the actual incomplete abortion and then I'm also going to show you guys how you look up the diagnosis codes for that um depending on what's in the note okay so my provider um that works at the practice that i code for um he was working at the hospital and um he was consulted by one of the ed um doctors so the patient went into the ed and then you know sometimes um, they might need to reach out to a provider from a different specialty. Well, because the patient had vaginal bleeding, he um, consulted my provider. So when I go into his consult note, um, it says here uh, the patient should have been 12 weeks um, based on her LMP, which is her last menstrual period. She's presenting with vaginal bleeding since yesterday. Uh, she has been passing large amounts of clots and tissue in the past day. Uh, the transvaginal ultrasound today, we have no evidence of intrauterine pregnancy or gestational sac. So they did an ultrasound and there was nothing, there was no heartbeat, there was no sac, no nothing in her uterus. So that tells us that she had a um, spontaneous abortion. The baby has come out and um, she's still bleeding. So that will tell us that it's an incomplete abortion. So now um, I see that he also did an HMP note. So instead of us billing a consult, which is your 99251 through 99255, I believe. Um, I rarely bill those consults. Yeah, 255 for inpatient. We are now going to bill an admit because my provider um, pretty much um, took over her care. So she's no longer going to be seen by the ED providers solely, she's going to be um, my provider's patient now. And he is admitting her. So um, I already reviewed his documentation and his documentation that he has here does not meet for an HMP because that will be what we would be billing an initial HMP code. And that code is let me see here, 99221 through 99223. So these codes here, the initial hospital care codes, um, the very first one is 99211 up here at the top, 99222, and then 99223 is on the other side. But like I said, we're not billing that. His level actually met for a subsequent visit. So Yes, we're not um, seeing her for a subsequent day, but if that's what his documentation meets, then we have to downcode him to a subsequent charge. And um, we also have in his note that we are going to do 
um what is it dilation and evacuation i believe let me see um will proceed with suction dnc slash dne so either dilation and um curatage which is when they're going to take an instrument up and then just scrape um the remaining placenta and all that out or they're going to use a suction um device to suck all that out of her uterus so um modifier where's my modifier modifier 57 is going to go on that ENM code because we are billing an ENM and a procedure or surgery on the exact same day. So we need that modifier 57 because um, modifier 57 reads, where is it? It's modifier 57 reads, decision for surgery and evaluation and management service that resulted in the initial decision to perform the surgery may be identified by adding 50, modifier 57 to the appropriate level of ENM. And I have a note here that says day of or day before procedure. So you can see that right there. So I have his operative note here, treatment of incomplete abortion, any trimester completed surgically. And then the code is also on the note and it is the 59812. So the patient was admitted to the hospital with vaginal bleeding and unknown pregnancy. Estimated gestational age is 12 weeks by her LMP. Uh, let me get into the procedure details. Patient was prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion in dorsal lithotomy position, a weighted speculum and right angle retractor replaced in the vagina to visualize, visualize the speculum. The cervix was already sufficiently dilated to pass a number 10 straight suction and curette which was inserted in suction uh, curatage was performed for three passes with a large amount of products of co conception obtained. The large sharp curette was then used to gently curette the endometrium. A small amount of additional tissue was obtained. The suction curette was reintroduced for two final passes to, to assure the blood was adequately cleared. All instrumentation was then removed from the patient's cervix and vagina. Bimanual massage was performed to ensure good uterine tone. The patient tolerated the procedure well and was taken to the recovery room, awake and in stable condition. Out of everything that I read, he tells me that he did um, suction. He also did the curatage. So if you are looking in your CPT book and you're trying to determine what code to bill, obviously you would start in the back of your book and we are going to look up abortion. So let me skim through my book to find abortion. And then we are gonna look up incomplete and incomplete tells us to use the 59812. So then you're gonna to go to the that code in the maternity and delivery section and that's going to tell you the 59812 is treatment of incomplete abortion, any trimester completed surgically. That is our CPT code that we are going to build. And now we need to find our diagnosis code. So you then have to go to your ICD-10 book. And this time you look in the front of your book for abortion. Okay, so once you get to abortion, you are then going to find incomplete. And then you are also going to look for hemorrhage because she did have bleeding. And hemorrhage tells us that it is going to be the 003.1. So then you have to go to that code in the back, in the O section, which is also um, called your tabular list, the back of the book. And then you will look for the 003.1 and that will be your main diagnosis code. You do not need to report um, the Z3A uh, weeks of gestation code with any of the abortion codes. So that is the only things that I need for that. And that patient is billed and sent out. Okay, so my next thing that I have to review is going to be a patient came in to deliver and she was having vaginal bleeding at home. Patient reports normal fetal movement, no contractions, no leakage of fluid, and vaginal bleeding, which started suddenly at home this AM. 
She called her midwife and was advised to present immediately to labor hall. She is 38 weeks. So obviously, if you're having bleeding, bleeding that late in your pregnancy, you want to get into the hospital as soon as possible. Uh, let me read through here further. Since signed and all questions answered, recommend we proceed directly to cesarean delivery and do so quickly based on the amount of bleeding and see intermittent late de uh, and they see intermittent late decelerations. And the op note says um, she reports that she soaked a large period pad on her way to the hospital. Uh, the suspicion for placenta abruption was high and therefore the patient was consented for cesarean delivery. I'll show you guys how we look up this placenta abruption diagnosis code. Also, the weeks of gestation, she is 38 weeks, and she ended up having a, uh, I believe she had a viable male infant. So she had a baby boy, and he was alive. So I will have to add that diagnosis code as well. And let me just make sure I'm not missing anything else. Uh, there were late decelerations, so I'll have to add that diagnosis code, meaning the baby's heart rate was fluctuating, going down some. And um, we have to put that on there. And what else am I missing? Oh, because there was some uterine acne, meaning that she had some bleeding. Uh, once the placenta had came out, she had more bleeding. So that is the uterine acne. So now it is time to look over for our uh, diagnosis codes in our ICD-10 book. And the very first one that I'm going to look up is going to be uh, delivery. I'm going to look up delivery. And then I'm also going to look for uh, placenta abruption. Right here, cesarean for abruptio placentae. And it says, see also abruptio placentae, which is 0459. And then if you go over in the tabular list to 0459, you'll see that you have to use um, the last digit number is going to be three for third trimester because that's what she is in right now, her third trimester. And that's our first diagnosis code. And then we need to look up the code for decreased fetal movement for the baby. And that is going to be, you can look up delivery complicated by right here. You can go to delivery complicated by, and you're going to jump over to fetal and you're going to come down to heart rate or rhythm. And that's going to be your 076 code. And you will confirm that code in your tabular list. So after I get that one, I am going to look up my uterine atony or atony. <laughs> and that one is going to be right here underneath complicated. We're still in delivery, but it's going to be right here. Atony uterus. And that's going to be the O 62.2 but we did not use that code. We ended up using a different code. This is 062.2. So let me go over here and see why I chose the other one. Okay, that one is without hemorrhage, but she definitely had bleeding because the note told me that she did. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, so when you're looking up for the what is it? The uterine acne. You are still going to be in your delivery section because all these codes are happen during delivery. So I went to delivery, complicated by, and then I looked for postpartum, not elsewhere classified, atonic, immediate, 072-1. Because this hemorrhage happened after the baby was delivered and after the placenta um was delivered so that's why we are using postpartum so i'm going to go over to 072.1 072 is right here postpartum hemorrhage point one other immediate postpartum hemorrhage and it says hemorrhage following delivery of placenta that's what we did and that's when it occurred so postpartum hemorrhage a tonic and 
a tonic. Is it a tonic? It's probably a tonic. And not otherwise specified, uterine, a Tony, or acne. Why do I always want to say Tony? Acne. <laughs> Uterine acne with hemorrhage and excludes ones. Uterine acne not otherwise specified, so you cannot use O62.2 with O72.1. You cannot use O62.2 uterine acne without hemorrhage, and you cannot use postpartum acne of uterus without hemorrhage, O7589. And I'm not using any of those codes. I am using O45.93, and that does not tell me that I can't use that. So we are good to go. And we are just going to keep moving along. My next code that I looked up was O76, which is the abnormality in the fetal heart rate. And that also states, excludes ones for these codes here, but we are not using those, so I don't have to worry about it. And here is an excludes two note, meaning if the patient or the baby had fetal metabolic acidemia, O68, or other fetal stress, O77.0 through O77.1, I could build these codes with O76 because it's an excludes two. So we can build um, those codes with this code. It's not an excludes one. And my next thing I need to look up is weeks of gestation and then my single live birth for you guys. So let me um, look up that code. Where is it? And that is our first full delivery. Okay, so I'm going to write all these codes down so you guys know everything that we build. So we build 595. 10 and that was for our c-section it also included our antepartum care and then our diagnosis codes we used was o4593 we used o72.1 um z37.0 Z3A 38 and O76. Okay, so here are my codes that are going to go out on the claim. The glare is kind of like um, bad, but there we go. So we have our 59510 is our C section that also included the antepartum care. And postpartum care, but I forgot to write postpartum on here. But all that is included in this one code. And then our diagnosis codes we have were 045.93, 072.1, Z37.0, Z3A38, and 076. So if you can remember what I told you guys, this was for the decelerations. This one was for the decelerations. This one is the weeks of gestation. Uh, this is the outcome of delivery. 072.1 is, um, is the postpartum hemorrhage or the uterine acne. And the 04593 was the placenta or placentae abrupt. Dio. Abruptio or abruptio? I don't know. <laughs> but yes, those are all my codes. And you guys just coded a cesarean delivery. You guys feel like you did something? It's a lot when you have to go to every single place to look for this and then you flip to the back and then look for this and then you flip to the back. That's why I like having like a little marker board here um, at my desk. I like to write my codes down usually and then go to the back of the book to make sure can these codes go together. So that way you're not flipping from the front to the back, from the front to the back, from the front to the back. It's just a lot of page turning. And you guys saw that pretty much when I was looking in that delivery section in the index, we stayed right there uh, majority of the time, except for when we had to leave to go to the weeks of gestation and 
when I had to look up the outcome of delivery. Besides that, all the other O codes was right there in the delivery section. So writing them down as you are in the index and then working your way through the tabular list is very, very helpful in my opinion. So yeah, I just wanted to um, share with you guys that delivery because it, it was a little bit different. Usually sometimes I'll have cesarean deliveries or vaginal deliveries and they're perfectly fine. There's not that much research that I have to do in my book, but this one, it took a little research. So um, I wanted to show you guys that. And yeah, that is it for this video. I will catch you guys in another one. And happy coding.